We'll start. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Olga Atomano. I'm glad to welcome you to the Ukraine Forum Media Center. It's almost two years that, ten years that the war is going on, and we have almost two years since the full-scale invasion of the enemy. We will talk about the situation in the south of the country. Natalia Hunivinyuk is with us. She's head of the coordination press center of the uh, south of Ukraine. We know that at night the Russians have again shelled and uh, hit with missiles the Ukrainian territory, both in Kherson and Mykolaiv and the Odessa regions. Yes, that's true. The enemy does not stop its aggressive activity in the direction of the coast, and uh, we especially suffering are the territories that are next to the water. They are using more and more drones now. They are augmenting their efforts and they are using almost 80 units of drones within our sphere of responsibility every day, mostly in Kherson region, but also some reconnaissance drones and those who which may drop uh, fragment ammunition. They are using them from the Kinburn Peninsula in direction of uh, Mykolaiv region, Kusrub and the Chakiv communities, territorial communities. They try to raise the pressure at different directions and uh, fragment the efforts of our defense. However, we are holding and we are also broadening our grounds on the left bank of the Dnieper. It is evident that the occupiers are losing the initiative in some relations. They had difficulties in uh, forming assault groups. However, they have uh, now renewed these efforts and last day they were they held eight assaults however they all flopped and the enemy had to return to their positions with uh, losses we have confirmed that 105 enemy soldiers were killed in our sphere of zone of responsibility we also have liquidated some of their artillery and they including those that they use uh, for shelling the right bank of the Dnieper now we see that on the direction of Crimea they are forming some groups that are meant to reinforce their personnel and uh, machinery after heavy losses 
Today, there was a statement of the general headquarters about our movements on the left bank of the Dnieper. Do, can you offer us some details? You have to understand that every combat activity is very limited in the information field in order for it to have any prospects we inform you of what we can reveal to the society so today this is a fact that our work brings results the grounds that we hold on the left bank of the Dnieper is being broadened however you should understand that the front line is very flexible and under the pressure of uh, enemy units and we have to understand that they have very many soldiers there and uh, also reinforced positions and uh, while our soldiers have only the Dnieper behind their backs so you have to be very cautious as far as revealing the information and you have to limit yourself to the official information we also had information about explosions in the temporarily occupied city of Berdyansk do we have any details and let's talk also about our resistance movement in the occupied territory i have to address you taking into account that the resistance movement is uh, working under very harsh circumstances the enemy the occupiers are constantly searching for them and trying to locate them so every time when we have information about any actions you have to wait for some time until you really can talk and give confirmation or re refute the information that is being thrown into the information space i tell you once more the defense forces never never uh, inform about this without clarification and confirmation because we have to understand that we work under the conditions of hybrid war and you have to confirm that this information does not come or are not provoked or are not falsified by the enemy however this happens quite often because uh, on the eve of the elections that they are preparing for, they have uh, unleashed a very powerful information campaign about their forces going in the direction of Kherson and Mykolaiv regions, and they also want to juxtapo juxtapose Ukrainian forces and local population. So you have to be very cautious in uh, revealing and analyzing this information so let's wait until we have official information about berdyansk and then we'll talk thank you about the situation on the black and the sea of azov and what's happening to missile carriers there the situation is rather stable it is being controlled by our forces we are monitor monitoring the activities of uh, enemy vessels including submarines that are now uh, in the sea you have to know that there's a uh, starting period of the academic year training year as far as military sense is concerned and the navy has some special tax tasks like training and uh, working on links between different units so we may uh, presume that what they are doing in the seas on the high seas is that they are training however we understand that they all carry combat missiles so we cannot ignore the threat that they pose and the training may any time become their combat activities so we always warn on their presence on their level of readiness 
and it is not very easy for our air defense to locate the level of the missile danger and I draw the attention of the population that you have to react to the air alert sirens. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Ukraine Forum, I have a question as far as the shelling of uh, the south of Ukraine is concerned. Have you located, have you confirmed the use of North and Korean shells? We have not confirmed this every time after the shelling experts are working after the investigators and the general procurator's office also works and only after the balanced conclusion of the experts we announce any information within the zone of our responsibility we have not yet discovered the use of northern korean shells you have said that on the temporary occupied territories they are preparing to the so-called elections in russia how does this influence at the moment on those who are who have to stay in the occupied territories we understand that the pressure on the local population is uh, immense yes it is true there's pressure and there's also obligatory passportization issuing of russian passports on the uh, temporarily occupied territories because in order to conduct these uh, elections on the occupied territories they have to form the visibility of the agreement on the part of the population so they use all the migration and filtration measures to locate people who have not yet got the Russian red books, the passports, and have not joined the Russian so-called citizenship. Besides, this is a concealed mobilization, because uh, while they are doing this, they uh, see the men of uh, drafting age, and they are enlisting them into the so-called territorial defense units, and then they become the resource of the occupants units which are on the left bank of the Dnieper. Thank you. Thank you for joining our broadcast. Natalia Humanyuk, the head of the Joint Coordination Cent Press Center of the Forces of Defense of the South of Ukraine, was with us. Stay with us. We work together in order to gain victory, thank you, the uh, Defense Forces, and glory to Ukraine.